Conceived in Paris and London during the dark days of World War I, and drawn initially with a crude Chinagraph pencil, the secret plan to redesign the Middle East was termed as the Asia Minor Agreement, with vast areas under British and French influence. France had colonial ambitions, while Britain wanted to protect the Suez Canal and connections to its most important colony, India. The Sykes-Picot Agreement was named after Sir Mark Sykes, representing the British government, and François-Georges Picot, his French counterpart. It's a quote attributed to Sykes that showed the ambition, as well as the folly of the task ahead. I should like to draw a line from the E in Acre to the last K in Kirkuk. Both Sykes and Pico were quintessential empire men, seasoned in colonial administration. They were believers in the notion that the region would be better off under European control. As the future spoils of the Great War were debated by Britain and France, vast areas of the Ottoman Empire were argued over. Pico was determined to secure control of Syria for France. For his part, Sykes raised British demands to balance out influence in the region. But among British concerns in redrawing the Middle East were the apparent promises made via a British colonel named T.E. Lawrence, better known as Lawrence of Arabia. He galvanized a Bedouin army against the dying Ottoman Empire, hoping that full Arab independence would be the prize for Arab loyalty. The Sykes-Picot Agreement of 1916 killed those ideas. The areas that have been under Ottoman rule since the early 16th century ended up creating new countries and two spheres of influence. The Syrian coast and much of modern-day Lebanon went to France. Britain would take direct control over central and southern Mesopotamia, including Baghdad and Basra. Palestine would have an international administration. Sykes-Picot has been seen as a flawed arrangement. The arbitrary drawing of borders became the hallmark of imperialism. But this was an agreement laid down before the Bolshevik Revolution of 1917, before Russia withdrew from the First World War. It didn't account for the emergence of Turkey, nor did it allow for the future growth of Arab nationalism. But it was the beginning of what we know now as the modern Middle East, for good or for bad. 100 years on, the borders of Sykes-Picot remain debated and highly controversial. Francis Collings, The Newsmakers.